Quite possibly, one of the best tools guitarists have ever created is the guitar tab. Tabs are a very specific notation made entirely for guitarists. They're exact, simple, descriptive, and match the guitar perfectly. You'll come across people calling them tabs and tablature, they're the same thing. In this video, I'm going to start with the basics for complete beginners, and then go into more advanced symbols later in the video. So think of this as your complete tab video to come back to anytime you see a new symbol. I'm going to do my best to cover everything. So let's dive in by taking a look at what's called the tablature staff. The tablature staff has six lines representing the six strings on the guitar. So each of those lines is representing one of the strings on the guitar. Let's start from the bottom. The bottom line on the tablature staff is going to be showing you what notes you are playing on your low E string. Your low E string is the string that's closest to you on the guitar and has the lowest sound. After that, the tablature staff is going to go in the order A, D, G, B, and then your high E, which is the thinnest string and the one on the bottom of the guitar. Now on your guitar, that would look like this. Now you don't necessarily need to remember the names of the strings, you just need to remember that the low E is going to be represented by the bottom line of the guitar tab, and it should be fairly straightforward from there. The next thing you'll see on your guitar tab is numbers, and those numbers are going to show you what fret to play on. So if you see a 3 on the bottom line of the tab, you now know that you're going to play the third fret of the low E string. Now sometimes you run into a situation where the numbers stacked on top of each other. All this means is that you're going to play those frets at the same time, which is a chord. So if you see a 3 on the bottom line and a 2 and a 0 on the lines above it, that means you're going to play your lowest three strings on the guitar together while holding them down on those frets, making a chord. The 0 means that you're going to play the string without holding down any frets at all, so an open string. So that's going to sound like this. Now another common thing you'll see on your guitar tab is a big row of numbers stacked on top of each other. When you see this, you can assume that this is going to be a chord. So if you look at the tab I made for you here, you can see that this is what a G chord looks like. And this is a C. And this is the A. Alright, so now you know the basics of reading guitar tabs, but you're going to run into a lot more signs on the tabs than just the numbers. Let's get into the good stuff. On the screen here, you can see a tab I made for you with all kinds of different things on it. Now, this might look scary at first, but it's actually all fairly straightforward, and after learning this group of signs, you'll be pretty much set to read just about any tab for any song out there. Now, if you're wondering where to put your new Tab Ninja skills to the test once you're finished watching this video, you should check out today's video sponsor, TomPlay. TomPlay's got a huge collection of over 6,000 interactive songs, sheet music, and tabs for guitar, bass, piano, and a ton of other instruments. You can find songs by artists anywhere from Ed Sheeran and Elton John to Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan, and a ton more. One thing I particularly like about TomPlay is that their guitar player is the best sounding instrument I've found from similar websites, and this really helps to hear what the song actually is supposed to sound like. I've heard a bunch of digital guitars, and to be blunt, a lot of them sound really bad. I looked into it more, and it turns out they actually record all the tracks on real instruments, and then bring them together in the interactive song so you can hear how it's meant to be played instead of with bad sounding digital guitars. And it's all synced up to their interactive tabs. That's actually really cool. I haven't seen anyone else doing that. You can check them out in the link in the description below. I got the guys at TomPlay to agree to give you guys a free 14 day trial of their premium membership just for watching this video. So it may as well give it a try. I mean, it's free, right? So click on the link in the description below to try it out. And with that, we're back to the video. So we start off with our G chord that you already know. We're going to read the tab from left to right, and we see that next we're going to play the D string without any frets held down at all. Now we move on to this slash, which is called a down slide. So we'll take our third fret of our B string and slide down to the fifth fret while keeping the pressure on the string the whole time. After that, we're going to do the same thing, but reversed, which is called an upslide. 
So the slide symbol shows you that you're sliding up from the fifth fret to the third. But sometimes you'll see a slide symbol that looks like this, where there's no number showing you where you're sliding from. Now what this usually means is that it doesn't really matter where you slide from as long as you get that slide down effect. So if you see something like slash 12, you know that you just have to slide to the 12th fret from wherever. And you're going to do it quickly in order to not have any other note ring out like this. So you can hear that you couldn't really hear a starting note. Generally while you're doing this, you'll slide quite far down on the string. So in order to accurately hit it, you want to keep your eye on the 12th fret the whole time and not worry about where your finger is hitting up at the start. Just keep focused on that ending point there. Okay, let's get back to our tap. So next you'll see this little symbol here. This is how we write hammer-ons. This means you'll play the G string open and then without picking again, you'll hammer on to the second fret like this. Now next you'll see this collection of notes written together like this on the D string. 0, H, 2, P, 0. In this situation, you're going to do a hammer on followed by a pull off. A pull off is where you're on a fret and you flick down to a lower note without picking twice. In this situation, we've got a hammer on before it, but this isn't always the case. A lot of the time you'll see something like 7P5. So you're going to hold down the 7th fret and pick the string. At the same time, you'll have a different finger pressing down on the 5th fret. Without picking again, you're going to do a little flick downward and then release it. So in our tab, you're going to do the hammer on and pull off with one pick, just like this. You might also be wondering why the hammer on isn't using the symbol we just used. I just want to show you this because it's a common thing that you'll come across in tabs. Some tabs will use an H to describe a hammer on instead of its symbol. The same goes for pull offs. Sometimes you'll see it written just as a P and then sometimes you'll see it written with the same symbol we used for the hammer on. You'll be able to tell it's a pull off because you can't hammer on to a lower note. Moving on, we've got the squiggly guy. This is called vibrato, which means you're going to bend the string up and down very quickly in order to create a sort of vibration on that note. You'll see a lot of vibrato in most classic rock or blues solos, and it's an awesome technique to get yourself used to just to add a little bit of flash and spice to your play. So then we move on and we see this big stack of notes, which we know from before is your G chord. But on the A string, you see a little X. This is called a dead note. And that means we don't want to hear this string. So we're going to mute it. There are a few ways to do this based on the circumstances. But in this situation, the easiest is to play your G chord and then block the A string from ringing out with your second finger. Sometimes muting can be quite challenging, but it is something that'll help your playing later on a lot. Just be patient with it and know that it's a skill that takes years to develop to perfection. So we move on and see a few more hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then this one here. And that's a really common pattern that you'll see a lot. Hammer-on, pull-off, pull-off. All right, next up we've got this 4B. The B stands for bend. So you're going to take the 4th fret of the G string and bend it up until it sounds like the 5th fret of the G string. Bending is another skill that can be somewhat difficult, especially on an acoustic guitar. But a great way to practice this is by doing this exercise and training your ear to play bends properly. If you've got an electric guitar, I would recommend learning to bend on the electric guitar before trying the acoustic because the acoustic is way harder. I even struggle to get this half fret bend over here on the acoustic guitar. So we hold this bend up top and let it ring out in this scenario. But if you were to see this BR, that would mean you release the bend and bring it back down to its normal note all in one pick, which is called a bend release. 
On our tab, we then run into a PB. This is a pre-bend. This means you pick the string while it's already bent and then bring it back down to its normal note. It'll sound something like this. And then finally, we end our tab on the 12th fret of the G string, and we end it with this beautiful skill called a harmonic. You can only play harmonics on the 12th, 7th, and 5th fret, and in order to play harmonics, you're going to just sort of hover your finger over the fret rather than pressing it down. It'll make this beautiful noise. So, all together, our tab is going to sound like this. And you've just learned about every symbol that you're going to come across in guitar tablature. Now besides just these symbols, there are a few other things to be aware of about guitar tabs. Keep these things in mind as you're learning to play with tabs. Guitar tabs online are just made by whatever random person decided to make them. So when you're out searching for a song, you might find yourself seeing tabs that are different than others for the same song. Now this doesn't mean one of the tabs is necessarily wrong, but people are trying to decipher the song by ear, which is hard to do, and they could hear it differently. If you run into two different tabs for a song, feel free to give them both a try and just see which one you like better. Every once in a while you'll come across a tab where someone just made a mistake, so don't always feel like you have to strictly follow your tab if it doesn't sound right to you. Another thing to keep in mind is that the guitar tab does a great job of showing you what goes on with your left hand, but it doesn't do a great job of showing you timing and rhythm. Keep in mind that when you're using tabs to learn a song, you'll still want the song open and ready to listen to as well while you're learning it. If you just try to use the tab, you could end up playing the right notes, but still play the song very wrong. Tabs are a great tool for learning, and they're even better when you pair them with a great ear. That's about all I have for you on tabs. Hopefully things are much clearer now, and you're ready to get in and start learning songs without tabs ever holding you back. Good luck.